Would you make a jump like that you didn't have to? I have to, and I'm not gonna. Well, we got to, otherwise we're dead. He was the man of many faces, not just because of his great acting, but because Paul Newman, for all his legendary fame, could be pretty down to earth. People who knew him say the man behind the blue eyes could really surprise you. So just how? What did Newman really want to do with his life? How was the man as a father? I'm your host Nostalgic Nick with all these answers and more, and some of them are pretty bittersweet along with a pretty morbid way Newman like to have fun. If you enjoy our Paul Newman deep dive, please give it a thumbs up to show your support. Subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new video. But without further ado, come on and let's set off. What did Paul Newman apologize for? So of course you know Mr. Cool Hand Paul Newman, the actor. But what about Paul Newman, the sports legend? Newman's mother was a connoisseur of theatrical productions, while his father owned his own sporting goods store. Paul worked at his pop's shop and very quickly became a jock. He might have been a pilot for the US Navy, except he was colorblind. Well, instead, he was a radio operator. Back home, Newman was all set to attend college on a football scholarship. Except he got arrested for fighting and got himself kicked off the team. He cooled that temper off with a summer of stock theater at Yale, and well, of course he caught the acting bug. And Newman would be his own harshest critic. What is the meaning of this outrage? Leave my house at once, all of you. Paul landed a starring role in 1954's The Silver Chalice, which saw him as the Greek slave who made the cup for the Last Supper, who could turn down a starring role and a thousand bucks a week. The movie's reception was a very mixed bag. His performance earned Newman a Golden Globe nomination for Most Promising Male Newcomer, but nobody hated the film more than Paul Newman himself. He would call it the worst film of all time, and he slammed his own performance too. It got to the point where Newman apologized to the world and put out ads telling audiences to not watch the film and criticizing himself would be a theme for Paul, even when everyone around him said he was doing everything right. Was Joanne Woodward with Paul Newman when he died? Brutal breakups are a dime a dozen in Hollywood, but every so often you'll find a diamond in the rough. That sparkling dream of a romance was between none other than Newman and the legendary Joanne Woodward. The two met while working on the Broadway show Picnic. At that time, Newman had actually been married to his first wife, Jackie Witt, with whom he tied the knot in 49. But they hit it off immediately. Joanne likened the first meeting to seeing an ice cream soda ad in person. She said he was perfect and charming in every way, and the two became a definitive power couple of Hollywood, working efficiently on their own careers and starring in some dozen movies together. But they weren't just an effective couple of actors, they were totally smitten with each other, a fact their daughter Melissa Newman got to see firsthand. Melissa said, quote, They could have their knockdown, drag out fights, but they always came clinging back to each other. She recalls them always gently touching one another every time they walked by. And looking at old photos of her dad, Melissa can see a difference between the man he was before and after marrying Joanne, which they did in 1958. Now, Melissa does say things were not always all ice cream and cake in her words. She said, quote, There was a vibe of tension in the house that would sort of come and go. In their family, Joanne was the firm one who laid down the law, set the pace, and enforced the rules. Paul Newman even credited her with his own status as a complete sex symbol. But at the end of the day, Melissa just saw two people thoroughly in love. She believed that if her dad was dropped on a deserted island and only could have one thing, that would be his beloved Joanne. And in his final years, when Paul's world closed in around him from disease, Joanne Woodward was still right there beside him, till death did they part. How many children did Paul Newman have? Newman had quite the family he built over the years. He had six kids in total. Three from his first wife, Scott, Susan, and Stephanie. And three with Joanne, Nell, Melissa, and Clea. Joanne was a very hands-on mom. Melissa shared how she had a natural birth with her kids and nursed them herself. All unusual at this time. 
Paul would criticize his own parenting job, but he did make sure to document the entire journey. Melissa remembers growing up surrounded by pictures of the famous family, and this drove her to put together a book, Head Over Heels, a photo album chronicling her famous family's life. One of her favorites appears early on, her sister pointing to a photo of her mom at her most glamorous state. That, Melissa said, pretty much sums up the duality of her life. Be sure to check out our video description for a link to that book. What did Paul Newman say to his son? Not only did you desert your pledge class, but you take one of them off with you. You know he's supposed to stay in the house. Paul's son Scott took after his dad and pursued acting. He appeared in films like The Towering Inferno, Breakheart Pass, and Fraternity Row. Things were a bit hit and miss between Paul and Scott. Scott was still a young kid when his parents split. And while it was a fairy tale for Paul, that kind of thing is never easy for the kids. On top of that, during Scott's formative years, Paul basically rerouted his entire life and moved to California to build his career. Scott lived in Connecticut and got kicked out of private school again and again. Eventually, when Scott took up acting and stunt work, he started appearing in his dad's films. But even though he was appearing in his dad's films, Scott did not want to ask Paul for a penny and he also took menial jobs to get by. As you may imagine, it was kind of difficult living in dad's massive shadow, always under threat of getting told he got fame through nepotism. But Scott would insist, quote, I'm not taking any acting help from my father. I want my work to stand on its own merit. His son also took up drinking and was sometimes arrested for minor offenses. Paul was more than aware of the effect he had on his son and the potential harm he'd already done. In 1978, Scott was in a major motorcycle accident and started taking painkillers. He finally accepted his dad's money to pay for psychiatric help through his drug battle. But terribly, not long after that, Scott Newman overdosed on Valium, alcohol, and other drugs. Scott was 28 years old. A part of Paul Newman broke that day and he would say, quote, There's nothing you can say that will repair my guilt about Scott. It will be with me as long as I live. That guilt shaped Paul from a career-focused actor to a family man who put his skills towards saving others. Who were Paul Newman's closest friends? You can't consider yourself a disenfranchised citizen really because you're, uh, you're in the acting profession. Paul Newman was a man of contradictions. He didn't actually think too highly of himself. On top of that, he felt like a weirdo in his own skin. He would say, quote, I felt like a freak. Girls thought I was a joke, a happy buffoon. Newman also said he felt disconnected from his own emotions, that he was primarily a cerebral actor because he had to calculate and not feel. This warped sense of self might explain some of his most outrageous stunts, trying to overcompensate from some shortcomings. And when I say outrageous, I mean it. He was quite the practical joker with a dark sense of humor. One of his targets was the director of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. One time, he cut the man's car and desk in half. Then he got into a beat-up car and pretended he was in an accident. This last trend saw Newman take things up a level. He grabbed a prop dummy and tossed it off the side of the building so his latest director would think he jumped. And Paul would also dabble in, well, everything. In an age before it was common for actors to start their own brands, Paul Newman had his ambitious sights set on salad dressing. A mixture of oil and vinegar was his calling card, passed out to anyone who visited. And he got help getting his name in the cutthroat world of salad dressing from none other than Martha Stewart. This was back when she was a caterer and just so happened to live in the same neighborhood as Paul. She said a blind taste test ruled his dressing the king of the condiments. It was called Newman's Own. In fact, a few people were privy to the man behind those blue eyes just by being his neighbor. Probably his closest buddy was A. E. Hockner, an editor, playwright, and biographer. Their paths intercepted for work a few times, but it was as neighbors the two bonded in some pretty menial ways. It's thanks to Hockner's friendship we know Newman had a fondness of boats, especially very old, run-down ones with a story to tell. 
They would go fishing together, even though Hockner said they were both god-awful at it. The two's friendship lasted for 50 years and saw them do some pretty important stuff with their creative minds. One of those projects was Hole in the Wall Gang Camp, an entirely free camp for children with cancer and other life-threatening conditions. And what started as a local project became an international force of nature, one that his other daughter Clea would pick up when Paul passed. But probably the most personal endeavor was the one rooted in the most tragedy. Paul's guilt over his son Scott's untimely passing never left him, and it drove him to create the Scott Newman Center for Drug Abuse Prevention. What was the cause of Paul Newman's death? Newman liked his cigarettes, and he was a pretty heavy smoker until he quit in 1986. But tragically, this would still take its toll and reports started to surface that he was suffering from lung cancer. For a while, nobody gave a straight answer about what was wrong with him. But by 2008, Paul's mobility was pretty limited, and he died on September 26th at the age of 83. His publicist did eventually confirm it was cancer. But even at that end, Paul Newman wanted to keep things feeling bright. His friend Hockner, who saw Newman days before his death, said, quote, we didn't really talk about anything other than some funny things that happened. As I was leaving, I said, well, I'll keep in touch. He said, yeah, it's been a hell of a ride. Paul Newman, a legend to everyone, except maybe himself. Haunted by his own shortcomings, real and also imagined, he was surrounded by the fairy tale life and family. That was some nice polish over a darker past. He lost, and he gave back so much more. So Paul Newman, thank you for all the memories. Tell us, what was your favorite project starring Paul Newman? Butch Cassidy, The Sting, Cool Hand Luke, I mean, oh my god, he's so great. So get in the comments and tell us what your favorite movie is and what his best role was. Maybe give me some deep cuts while you're at it. And who should we cover next? If you enjoyed our deep dive, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you never miss a new video. But most of all, from all of us here at Do You Remember, we want to thank you for watching. I'm back.